Hello children, today I am here to do revision exercise 2 in your textbook. This is related to your second term work, chapter 9 to 17. So we will see how we can do these questions. Question number 1. Separate the collection of animals given here into two groups based on their common characteristics. Write a suitable name for each group. So what is the topic? Selection. So how we select these pictures? Animals are there, birds are there. How can we separate them into two groups? What can we do? And you do that, we'll take cow into one group. And take goat to the same group. And deer to the same group. What about the other three pictures? Crow, Mina, and parrot. What do you think? So these are two groups. We have to now give a name. So here can you see four legged animals here. So we can group this one as four legged animals. Or we can say quadruped. Quadruped. Here, what about this? Crow, minor, parrot, birds. So we can call these are, these pictures are birds pictures. Birds. So there are two groups, birds and four-legged animals. Question number two. In the pattern of the triangular numbers written in ascending order as 1, 3, 6, 10. Write down the next two terms. What's the gap here? When you add 2, you get 3. 3 plus 3, you get 6. What's the gap here? 4. 6 plus 4, 10. So what's the next term? The gap is 5. Add 5 to that, you get 15. What's the next term? You need to add 6 to that. You get 20 marks. So what are the next two terms? 15 and 21. In the pattern of the multiples of 5 written in ascending order as 5, 10, 15, 20. Which term is 50? So we need to identify a pattern there. Now look at here. This is the first term. 5 divided by 5, you get 1. This is the second term. 10 divided by 5, you get 2. This is the third term. 3. How do you get 3? 15 divided by 5. This is fourth term. 20 divided by 5. If the term is 50, the number is 50, what's the term number? So term number you can write the number divided by 5. So you get 10. So that means 10th term. 10th term is 50. Question number three, write down the shaded part in the figure as a fraction by taking the whole figure as a unit. So whole figure divided into eight equal parts. Out of eight, how many are shaded? Three parts are shaded. So what can we write as a shaded part? Three out of eight. Part two. Find the value. So fraction addition. Can we add straight away? The denominator is different. So you have to convert to the same denominator. So we'll convert to 10. 
means 5 times 2, 2 times 1, 2. Here 1. So when you add these two, you get 2 plus 1, 3 out of 10. What about this one? 2 and 3 as a denominator. What's the lowest common multiple of 2 and 3? That's 6. So you need to convert both to 6. 3 times 2, 6. 3 times 1, 3. This one, 2 times 3, 6. 2 times 2, 4. Now add these together. 3 plus 4, you get 7. 7 over 6. This is an improper fraction. Convert to mixed number. 1. And you get 1 remainder. 1 over 6. So you can write 1 and 1 over 6 as a mixed number. Look at the other one. Denominator is 8 and 4. So that's different. Convert to the same denominator. That's 8. So this is same thing. 4 convert to 8 multiplied by 2. 2 times 1, 2. So 3 plus 2, 5. 5 over 8. Now subtraction. Denominators are different. So 7 and 14. What's the common one? That's 14. So 2 times 7, 2 times 4, 8. This is 3. Now subtract the numerators. 8 minus 3, you get 5. 5 over 14. 12 and 3. What's the common one? 12. So you can write as it is here. 4 times 3, 12. 4 times 1, 4. Now subtract the numerator, 7 minus 4, that's 3, 3 over 12. Can we simplify? Divide both the numerator and the denominator by 3. You get 1 and 4, so 1 fourth. Find the value, so all these are decimals. So we'll add the decimals. So what's the easiest way to do? Write in a column. So we can write in a column so that the decimal point align in a column. Now, nothing means you can put a zero there. Now we'll add 5, 6 plus 5, 11. Take 1 here, 1, and you have to keep the decimal point there. This one, 2.76, 1.44. Add it together. 6 plus 4, 10. 1, you take it to the next value. 7 plus 1, 8. 8 plus 4, 12. 1, take it here. So 3 plus 1, 4. So 4.20 or 4.2 enough. No need to put 0 there. 1.71 minus 0 0.9. This is subtraction. So, nothing means you can put a 0 and write. 1 minus 0, 1. Can we subtract 9 from 7? You can't. You have to take 1 from here. 17 minus 9. That's 8. So, you get 0 0.81. This one, 2.13. 1.89. Subtraction. You can't subtract 9 from 3. 13 minus 9. So what's the value? 4. And here this becomes 0. You need to take 1 here. So 10 minus 8. That's 2. So this becomes 1. 1 minus 1. That's 0. 0 0.24. Question number 5. Write down all the multiples of 9 which are greater than 0 and less than 90. So starting from 9 times 1, 9 times 2, 9 times 3, 9 times 4, 36, 9 times 5, 45, 9 times 6, 54, 9 times 7, 63, 9 times 8, 72, 9 times 9, 81. And can we write down 90? 
you can't because it says less than 90. So up to 81 you can write. Write down the factors of 84. How can we find out the factors of 84? We know that 84 you can write 1 times 84. 1 and the number itself. It's divisible by 2. Divide by 2. You get 40. This is divisible by 3 as well. Divide by 3, 3 times 2, 6. And for 24, that's 8. Then this is divisible by 4 as well. 4 into 4 times 2 and 4 times 1. What else? This is definitely divisible by 6 because 2 and 3 is there. So divisible by 6. 6 times 1, 6. For 24, that's 4. This is divisible by 7 as well. Divide by 7. 7 times 1. And for 14, that's 2. So divisible by 7. So that's all. So we can write down the factors of 81 as starting from 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. And then we can start from here. 12, 14, 21, 28, 42, and 84. So those are the factors of 84. Question number 6. A person sold three tenths of his land and handed over one fifth to his son. Choose and write the false statement regarding the above two fractions. Both the fractions are proper fractions. What can you say about both the fractions are proper fractions? Proper fractions means the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Yes, that's correct. But you need to select the false statements. So this is correct statement. Both the fractions are unit fractions. Both are not unit fractions. One is, this one is a unit fraction. So that's a wrong statement. Only one fraction is a unit fraction. Yes, one fraction is a unit fraction. So this is correct statement. So choose and write the false statement regarding the above two fractions. So which one? That's B. B is wrong. Write the relevant values in the boxes. One fifth given. You need to convert to another denominator. So here both the numerator and the denominator multiply by 2. So 2 times 1, 2. 5 times 2. You get 10 here. Find the fraction that results when 1 over 5 and 3 over 10 are added. 1 over 5 plus 3 over 10. Convert to the same denominator, that's 10. So we found out before as well, this is 2 over 10. 3 over 10 here, when you add it, add the numerator. 3 plus 2, 5, 5 over 10, simplify, you can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 5, 1 and 2, so that's half. Show that the person is now left with half the land, so this is the given part to his son, a person sold this much and one-fifth given to the son. So this is the total number of parts. So what's the remaining part? Remaining land one is the whole thing one minus half. How can we subtract? One I can write two over two. When you subtract this two minus one you get one. So that's half. So left with half the land. 
The part remaining which is rectangular in shape is of length 50 meters. We'll draw the diagram. Length is 50 meters and 40 centimeters. And the width is 20 meters and 75 centimeters. How much greater is the length than the width in meters? So we need to take the subtraction. So the difference between these. So how can we subtract? We can write meters and centimeters here. Which one is bigger? Length is bigger. So 50 and 40, 20 and 75. And we'll subtract now. Can we subtract? 75 from 40, we can't. We have to take 1. When we are taking 1 means that's 100, 100 centimeters. 100 plus 40, 140. Now we can subtract 140 minus 75. We get 5 and 6, so 65. Now what is this number? 49. So you get 9, 4 minus 2, 2. So this is in meters and centimeters. But you have to give the answer in meters. Which in meters? So how can we convert? 65 centimeters we have to convert to meters. So we'll do that. We have to divide this by 100. That means move the decimal place two places to the left, 0 0.65. So what's the total length now? 29 and 65. So 29 meters plus 0 0.65 meters. You get 29.65 meters. Next one. Find the sum of the lengths of all the sides of the remaining plot of land. So basically they are asking the perimeter of this figure. How can we find the perimeter? We can add these two and multiply by two. So we'll do that now. So we need to add meters and centimeters. Meters, 20 meters and 75 here. 50 and 40. We'll add, this is length and width. 5, 7 plus 4, 11. 1 you take here. 5 plus 2, 7. Now we need to multiply this by 2 to get the perimeter. 2 times 5, 10. 1 you are taking here. 2 times 1, 2 plus 1, 3. 2 times 1, 2. 2 times 7, 14. So what's the value? What's the perimeter of this land? 142 meters and 30 centimeters. So not ask you to write in terms of meters. You can keep meters and centimeters there. Question number seven, the length of a rectangular blackboard is one meter, one meter and 50 centimeters. The width is 80 centimeters. Find the sum of the lengths of the four sides of the blackboard. That's also perimeter. So we'll add Length and width first, meters, centimeters. 1, 50. And this is 80. Add these two. 13 and 2. So 2 meters and 30 centimeters. Now multiply by 2. 2, 30. That's meters, centimeters. Multiply by 2. 0, 6, 4. 4 meters and 60 centimeters. Next one. Next part. When one goes to the school from 
Nero's house. Nero's house is here. School is there. Across the bridge. Express the distance in kilometers that one has to travel. Here and here. So that means adding the distances. Both in meters. So we are adding meters. 700 and 500. When you add it, you get 1200 meters. We can convert this to kilometers. So 1000 meters is 1 kilometers. When you divide 1200 by 1000, you get 1.2 kilometers. So again, addition, Cent meters and centimeters. We can add straight away. 5 plus 5, 10. 1 remaining. 8 plus 4, 12. 1 remaining. 6 plus 2, 8. Here, 0, 0, 0. 9 plus 6, 5. Take 1. 9 plus 6, 15. Take 1 here. You get 4 and 1. This is also addition. Meters and milliliters. This one, kilometers and meters. Same thing. When you take the next step, 1000, you take as 1. Here, 100, you take as 1. This is again 1000, you take as 1 liter. 0, 10, 8 plus 3, 11. Take 1. 5 plus 2, 7, 7 liters and 100 milliliters. Now this is subtraction. You can't subtract. Take 1 from here. So you are taking 1. So 0, 10 minus 5, 5. And here this is 9. Then this becomes 4, 4 minus 2, 2, two liters and 950 milliliters. Write the given numbers in ascending order in each of the following cases. Ascending, smallest to largest. Which one is small? We can't identify because different denominators. We'll convert to the same. This is also we'll convert to the same. 1 means 12 over 12. This is 1. Multiplied by 2, 2 times 5, 10. Now we can find out the smallest one. Smallest one is this, 1 over 12. Then this one, 5 over 6. And then 1. This one in ascending order. Smallest one. Look at the first decimal place. This is the smallest, so point 0.1. Then you can write point 0.2, point 0.3. Those are first decimal place. Then the whole numbers, 1 or 1.1, 1, 1, 1 is next and 1.1 1. 1 is the largest number. Question number 10. The length of a train engine is 16 meters. So this is given. The length of a compartment is 26 meters. The gap between two Compartments when joined is 2.5 meters. What is the length of a train with an engine and three compartments? So what's the total? So can you see we get 26 meter length three times. So total length. 26 into 3. Plus. How many gaps are there? 2.5 meter gaps. 1, 2, 3. You have to multiply by 3. And the engine. Engine is just 1. 16. So when you add all 3 together, you get the total length of the train with 3 compartments. So we'll multiply. 3 times 6, 18. 3 times 2, 6 plus 1. 7. 3 times 5, 15. 
1 remaining. 3 times 2, 6 plus 1, 7 and you need to put a decimal point and 60. So you need to add it right in a column when you are adding numbers like that. And you can put zeros for these numbers. 5 there. 8 plus 7, 15. 15 plus 6, 21. 2 remaining, 9 plus 1, 10. So what's the total length? 101.5 meters. Part 2. The illustration shows you a clock tower in a town. Express its total height in meters. So you have to add this. So we can write in a column 0 0.4, 1.05, You have to add all these three lengths. So when you are adding, make sure that you put a zero here. 5 plus 5, 10. Take 1. 5 plus 5, 10. Take 1 here. 2 plus 3, 5. So what's the total height? 5 meters. From among the 6 numbers, select and write down the numbers which are divisible by 2. How we decide? Look at the last digit. If the last digit is 0 or even number, the number is divided by Two without a remainder. 908. 1970. And 3800. You can't take the other numbers. Those are not even numbers. Select and write down the numbers which are divisible by 5. What's the rule? Look at the last digit. If it's 5 or 0, it's divisible by 5 without a remainder. 675, 1970, 2435, and 3800. How many numbers are there which are divisible by both 2 and 5? When you take 2 and 5. What are the common numbers? Thousand nine hundred and seventy and three thousand eight hundred. So how many numbers are there? Just two numbers. Fill in the blanks using suitable whole numbers. How you get twelve from one? 1 times 12. 2 times 6. 3 times 4. Hence, hence means using the previous answer. Find the factors of 12. What are the factors of 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12. So those are the factors of 12. In the same manner, find the factors of 18. So same manner means we have to find out how you get 18. 1 times 18. Then 2 times 9. 3 times and 9 times 2 or 2 times 9. So those are the possibilities. So you can write only those. So what are the factors of 18? You can write 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18. According to the above results, find the factors which are common to both the numbers 12 and 18. Now we'll find out common ones. 
one. What else? Six. So one, two, three, six are the common factors. Write down solids in which each of the following rectilinear plane figures can be observed. Rectangle. What's that? rectangle one side is a rectangle so we call that's a cuboid square so that means square as a base that's a cube triangle triangle as the base is what you call that Tetrahedron. Write down two characteristics observed in a square and a trapezium. Now, when you take a square, we know that all sides are equal, all angles are 90 degrees. What else? And the gap between the opposite sides are equal. So we have to write just two characteristics. And trapezium, we know that in trapezium, the gap in between one pair of opposite sides is equal. So we'll write down for trapezium. We can write gap between one pair of opposite sides is equal. That's the gap. And we can say for a square, all sides are equal. And you can write all angles are 90 degrees for square as well. So we need only two characteristics. A net of a regular tetrahedron is shown in the figure. What is the shape of a face of a regular tetrahedron? We know that regular means all sides are equal in length. So that's an equilateral triangle. What is the length of an edge of the model of a tetrahedron that can be made using this net? So when you fold it, you get one side is this one. So that means 10 divided by 2. So the length becomes 10 divided by 2. That's 5 centimeters. Question number 13. You have given numbers 1 to 10. Write down all the even numbers among the 10 whole numbers given above. So identify the digit, last digit here. And if the numbers are even numbers, that means that's divisible by 2 without a remainder. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Write down the least odd number and the greatest odd number among the 10 whole numbers given below. Odd numbers. So 1 is the least. And the greatest is 9. 
write down all the prime numbers that lie between 20 and 30. What are the prime numbers? 21, 22, 23 is not divisible. 23, 24, 25, 6, 27, 28 and 29 again. Not divisible by any other number. Only divisible by 1 and itself. So 23 and 29. Question number 14. Several measuring units used in day-to-day -day life are given below. Meters, milliliters, centimeters, liters and kilometers. Separate these measuring units into two groups having common characteristics. What are those? I'll take meters here. Centimeters. Kilometers. What are those? Now we'll take the other two here. Milliliters. Liters. So what are these? Meters, centimeters, kilometers. Units of length. And what are milliliters and liters? Units of measuring liquids. So these are the two groups. Same question. Write a suitable name for each group. So we already did that. Units of length and units of measuring liquids. Write down each of these measuring units along with its symbol meters. We use M. Milliliters, ML. Centimeters, we call CM. Meters, we use L. And kilometers. KM. Write down the relationship between the measuring units in each of the groups. So when you take units in lengths, units of lengths, centimeters. So 100 centimeter is 1 meter. In meters and kilometers, 1000 meters is 1 kilometer. What about milliliters and liters? 1000 milliliters is equal to 1 liter. That's the conversion. Question number 15. Express the amount 1 liter and 50 milliliters of liquid in milliliters. So that means 1 liter. You can convert to milliliters. 1 means thousand milliliters plus this 50 milliliters you can write thousand fifty milliliters we we'll look at part b express 2035 this should be in milliliters that's a mistake there milliliters in terms of liters and milliliters so 2035 milliliters convert to liters and milliliters. So here I can write this as 2000 milliliters and 35 milliliters. What is 2000 milliliters mean? 
divide by 1000, I get 2 litres. And 35 milliliters. So, what's the value? So, you get 2 liters and 35 milliliters. Part C. When 150 milliliters of water per glass is poured from 1 liter into 6 glasses, what is the remaining amount of water? So, what's the Amount of water in a glass, 150 milliliters. Is poured from 1 liter into 6 glasses. So, 6 glasses are there. So, we have to first find out total amount of water. 150 into 6. 6 times 0, 0. 6 times 5, 30. 3 remaining, 6 times 1, 6 plus 3, 9. 900 milliliters of water there. So, all together 1 liter. 1 liter means 1000 milliliters. So, what's the remaining amount of water? So, we need to subtract these two. So, remaining, remaining Amount is equal to 1000 minus 900. You get 100 milliliters. This part from 5 meters of white material, 2.5 meters are cut for a frock and 1.75 meters are cut for a shirt. Express the length of the remaining material in centimeters. So, first we need to find out the total. Total length for frock and shirt. 2.5 meters are cut for a frock. 2.5 and 1.75 1.75 cut for a shirt. So what's the total? You can put a 0. 5, 7 plus 5, 12. 1 you take here, 3 plus 1, 4.25 meters. Now they are asking express the length of the remaining material. So, what's the total length? 5 meters. So, we can subtract and find out the remaining length. So, take the total length. That's 5 meters. 5 minus 4.25. So, put zeros for these gaps. Now you can subtract. Take 1 from here. You get 5. And here this is 9 minus 2, 7. So this becomes 4, 4 minus 4, 0. So what's the remaining length? 0 0.75. 0 0.75 meters. Or you can multiply by 100 and write down 75 centimeters remaining from this material. Look at question number 16. Write down the names of two objects which take the shape of a cuboid. What are the shapes? You have seen a brick. So that's a cuboid shape. And matchstick box. Matchstick box normally that's a cuboid. Draw a net to make a box having the shape of a cuboid. So, how can we draw? We'll take two squares here. 
two squares there. So this is one side. And we'll take four squares for the rectangular shape, four and two. And then you need, when you fold it, you need another two by two square. Then you need, now you need to fold this two squares here and one, two, three, four, four squares here. So this is this side and this is the other side of the cuboid and we need the upper part. Upper part I can write one, two, three, four. This one. Okay, so we'll put colors and see. So this one is the bottom of the cuboid. And when you fold it, this is the upper part, top part. Then the side parts you get these two and when you fold it these two sides you get another color so this is the other two sides so you get one two three four five six six faces so this is a cuboid Write down the number of faces, number of vertices and number of edges of a cuboid. You can count from there or I'll draw a cuboid. We draw two rectangles and connect. So how many faces? Faces, you can easily count from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six faces are there. How many edges? Edges, you can get it from this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 edges. How many vertices? We'll count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 vertices are there. So this is the last question in your revision exercise 2. So I'll meet you with the next term's work.